Hello and welcome to this video on what drugs do to you. Remember, just once is enough. On more realistic terms, how many stories have you read of a person intoxicated by drugs doing the unrealistic? For example, the Oregonian man who fought off 15 or more police officers while masturbating in a bar because he was high on meth. This is a fight he took despite being tased and otherwise having one hand occupied, even if it wasn't tied behind his back. Unlike other superpowers which rely on gamma radiation, extraterrestrial origins, and money, these drug-fueled madmen are often a product of stimulants and selective breeding of the Florida man gene. The most common drug of choice is methamphetamines, but by no means the sole option. Before explaining how these drugs give their superpowers, we need to provide a brief overview of how they affect the nervous system, as this will explain a lot of what we see later on. Typically, your neuron has two parts to it, the cell body and a long offshoot called the dendrite. These two parts are important as the body will receive the signal from other cells, specifically other neurons, the dendrite will carry that signal on to the next neuron, and so this pattern repeats. Body receives, dendrite carries it on to the next location. Some of these nerves will end at a particular site where they'll perform an action, for example, causing a muscle to spasm, which is allowing you to then move. These movements only occur because the cells can communicate between each other, but they don't communicate entirely chemically. There are two forms of communication. One is an electrical impulse that is carried down that dendrite. This then gets to the end where it releases neurotransmitters. These will carry the message to the next neuron. These neurotransmitters have to cross a gap called a synapse. This synapse is important as it's where the chemicals can become lost, damaged, or unable to carry on the message. Once that message has been passed on, the communication and action potential continues with the new neuron. The new neuron has to have the appropriate receptors, and these are specialized for different neurotransmitters, and there are many neurotransmitters. A few of them are more important than others. When we're talking about the brain, there are some that are even more specific. One of these is called dopamine, and dopamine itself plays a role in something called the limbic reward system. You may also know it by the name dopamine reward system, or the brain reward system. These are what you would call the positive motivators to continue taking drugs, and one of the reasons why people can readily become addicted. Dopamine also plays a very important role in various controls within the brain, specifically parts of the brain in charge of movement, cognition, motivation, and that previously mentioned reward. If you get a large amount of dopamine in the brain that's not doing its job where it should be, but is simply running amok, you can get a significant increase in mood. You can also get increased body movement. In moderation, these aren't necessarily bad. In excess, they can create nervousness, irritability, aggressiveness, paranoia, and even schizophrenia. In some cases, stimulants such as meth can have the effect of causing this latter, more extreme consequence of dopamine. This occurs by disrupting the way those neurons communicate with each other. One of the ways methamphetamines do this is to disrupt the dopamine receptors. They cause the neurons to become overstimulated, thinking that they are constantly getting the message to be activated by another neuron, but instead it's the drug getting into the brain. This plays havoc with the concentrations of dopamine throughout the brain and between the neurons, which means that they become unable to control what's happening correctly. One of the more interesting phenomena that occurs as a consequence of methamphetamine use is that over the duration of use, a user will become more and more habituated to it, but this will also lead them to become more sensitized. This means that smaller doses can have bigger effects. Knowing that drugs, and particularly meth, work this way in very broad terms, we then need to look at the effect it has on the body in a slightly more specific manner. In general still, 
Taking a drug like methamphetamine can have several very specific effects because it is a stimulant. It's also a surprisingly well-documented stimulant. Apart from the effect it has on the neurons, it has certain changes to the body. These can be simple as increasing blood pressure by increasing the systolic and diastolic heart rate. You can simply increase blood pressure across the body, increase breathing rates, body temperature. The dilation of the pupils make people more alert and increasing the motor activity by priming all the neurons in the body. This is one reason why methamphetamines were used in World War II, particularly by the Germans, to keep their soldiers awake and active. When you consume meth itself, it has some almost immediate effects. The most well known of these is an improved sense of well-being, followed by euphoria and excitement. Naturally, these are relatively positive emotions, but it also comes with heightened alertness, an increase in motor activity. It can also reduce your need for food, sleep, and may reduce inhibitions, thereby making you more sociable. Stimulants also have been shown to improve certain psychomotor tasks. This can include reaction time and similar. Methamphetamine, again, being a well-studied one of these particular stimulants. One of the less desirable byproducts in modern society, but historically less concerning, was that it can lead people to become more and more aggressive. Another byproduct of playing with the brain with drugs like this is that it can lead to psychosis or schizophrenia. These latter points are why drug users are so much stronger, faster, and resilient than the average person for a time. Historically, that's what the drug manufacturers wanted, particularly when using it for soldiers. The drug user's body is undergoing an extreme version of the normal fight-or-flight response. The extreme nerve stimulation from the drug has an almost overpowering effect on the sense of pain the drug user has. And this means they do not feel the pain of their actions. There are, as far as they are concerned at the time, no consequences. They can push through something that would normally hold a person back, such as actions that would cause themselves pain, and that inflicted by others. The drugs also affect how long or short the recovery period is after being tased successfully. The caveat is that they need to have been hit correctly. When a taser lands, it causes the nervous impulses to happen no matter what. That is, it ignores the need for the signal to pass from one neuron to the next, as it is just activating everything. This causes muscle contractions and spasms that last a few seconds. Once these stop, normally a person's body completely relaxes, causing them to drop to the ground. The drug user, such as one who's taking methamphetamines, could more or less recover from this almost immediately. The caveat we've mentioned is that quite often a taser will not land correctly, which won't allow it to pass a current through the body, achieving the desired result of activating all the muscles. Without that, the meth user will simply continue to act as though they had not been hit by it at all. Because their brain and body is already in overdrive, they recover from this state very quickly and can keep going, showing almost no side effects. When you combine the effects we've mentioned, particularly the combination of psychological, or at least psychomotor, and the ability it has to fine-tune and improve the body's reactivity and recovery, you can see how one man could overpower 15 police officers while being tased and occupying himself. He had the reaction speed, perception, physical priming to act rashly, and more. The drugs adversely affected decision making and meant that he could take steps that others would be reticent or have slight delays in making. He lacked the ability to make sound decisions while on drugs. Without a sense of pain and almost no consequences while the drugs continued to affect him, he would act with no fear of feeling any repercussions, even the effects of a taser or 15 people piled on top of him trying to control his actions. The loss of his inhibitions would explain why he chose to do this in a public place with little to no indication that he should or that would give him reason to do this. This has been a simple demonstration, so to speak, of 
why certain drugs and their consequences can seem so overpowered. The way they can act on the brain, and then consequently the whole body, is incredibly powerful, and with certain drugs, it can become easily achieved with only the smallest fractional amounts. This is one reason why drugs, while in some cases safe, are generally quite dangerous. Thank you for watching this video. If you have found it interesting, consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Please post any comments, questions, or suggestions you might have below.